Alright guys, so I haven't done a gun review for you for quite a while. Uh, I want to get another one out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just got one in the other day that I thought would be kind of interesting to do an unboxing on. Um, it's obviously a Smith & Wesson as you can see by the box. And um, also my favorite caliber. So let me go ahead and open it for you. What we have here is just as you would see when you open the box is um, Smith & Wesson 329 PD 44 Magnum um, in the case here you've got the padlock you've got the keys for the for the internal lock you have um, fired shell casing that they um, uh, include in the box this one was test fired August 21st, 2013. Have the have the uh, instruction manual here for it's just uh, generic for all the revolvers, and we have the warranty card for Smith and Wesson. Uh, I think that's everything, included in the case also. This particular gun comes with two different style uh, stocks for the revolver. Uh, comes first, I believe these are made by Aaron's wood finger grip um, stocks. I have these on a couple of other guns of mine. Uh, they're nice looking. I think they're rather comfortable myself. And this is the um, rubber grip. And if you'll notice, it's a slightly different style than the one that Smith & Wesson used to use up until the last year or two. Um, the one that they used to use was a hold grip with much more um, exaggerated finger grooves. And this one looks more like a, one of the older style Packmeyer grips that's more um, understated in the finger grip um, side. One thing I do like about this um, grip over the old ones is that the back strap is enclosed on these. I don't feel very much padding, but the, the back strap of the gun is exposed on the rubber grip itself. So, so that's kind of a nice uh, option. So it comes with both. First you've got the wax paper the gun comes in. And then you have the gun itself. Um, the most interesting thing about this gun, I suppose you could say, is um, the material that it's made out of. You'll see that it's um, it has Air Light PD written on the side, and this kind of crazy looking chemistry-like symbol. And that's because the gun itself, the frame, and I believe the cylinder is made out of titanium. Um, it's not pure titanium, but it's an alloy of titanium. I'm not sure if they use aluminum or what mixed with it, but um, and that also that that leads to a very lightweight handgun. Um, this is a 44 Magnum 4 inch barrel, um, 6 shot revolver, a full size end, end frame um, gun. And normally a gun this size would weigh probably 43 ounces I'm guessing. And this gun weighs 26 ounces. So you haven't quite cut the weight in half but you've come awfully close. Um, which makes this a wonderful packing pistol if you're going to be um, woods walking or something like that. Um, makes it a great backup gun for hunting. You hardly know it's there on your side. I've used Smith & Wesson's in that capacity for years and um, while you do get used to the weight, um, this should make it a lot easier to carry a handgun in those capacities. Uh, we, I go to camp a lot, my father and I, and um, it's always good to carry a handgun and with a gun of this weight it would be much more comfortable to do than a, a stainless steel or a blued steel gun. Um, you'll notice that they have done a lot to try to take extra weight out. They have um, cut into the top strap of the shroud here to reduce weight. They've cut into the top strap on the bottom, uh, or the, the lug on the bottom to reduce weight. Of course they fluted the cylinders in the frame and, and the cylinder itself. Is, or titanium alloy. The, the cylinder is unbelievably light. Um, the only thing I believe that are stainless steel on the gun is probably the hammer and the trigger, the um, cylinder release, and the barrel itself is stainless steel. 
This outer part that you see is a shroud, and the barrel itself is just a stainless steel tube that's screwed into the frame, and this uh, shroud is uh, screwed over the top of it to complete the, the look of the gun, because it would look kind of silly with just a round stainless steel tube sticking out of the end. <clears throat> You'll see that the pins are made out of a slightly different material. Um, those may be a more pure form of titanium for the pins. Um, another interesting thing about this gun are, is the sighting system. You'll notice that um, it has the fiber optic front sight in a red. And I like it because the tube itself is not exposed. It has a plastic covering to give it more um, durability in the field this thing is going to be carried in a holster and it's going to be carried a lot so if you just have a fluorescent tube um, exposed it's it's not going to last long and also the rear sight is not a, a square notch it's a v-notch for um, fast sight acquisition more like a, a dangerous game rifle has a v-notch in it so this one um, has the same so it's more for for uh, defensive purposes um, we do have uh, critters where we live here in Maine. Um, we've seen bear up by our camp. There are coyotes, um, porcupine, um, and there are wolves that we have seen up there. Um, regardless of what the Maine State Fish and Wildlife people say, they are there. Um, another interesting thing about this is apparently under heavy firing, there is accelerated top strap erosion. You get flame cutting. I'm not sure if it'll show up well, but they have included a stainless steel um, shield where the bar barrel cylinder gap is to um, slow down the top strap flame cutting. And I have read that if you end up cutting through that with the barrel cylinder gap, those can be replaced. The little stainless steel shield up there. I have yet to fire this gun. Um, I have read and anticipate pretty heavy recoil with full uh, full hand loads in this gun. I think it'll be fine. Um, I make a variety of different loads for this gun, um, light up to heavy. Um, I think a good Everyday load might be a 240 grain semi wad cutter at around a thousand feet per second, which probably won't beat you up too bad. Um, so I think I think it's going to be a nice gun. One thing I've also read is on this gun because of the cylinder and the finish on the cylinder, it's not good to go nuts and try to get rid of the powder burns on top of the cylinder because you'll wear through the the top coat. So it's one of those things that you just live with those um, powder burns. These are from the factory test fire. Um, so I'm not going to go nuts trying to get that off. It's a working gun. So anyway, I thought you would be interested in taking a look at the new handgun. It's the Smith & Wesson PD 329 PD 44 Magnum. Should be a very nice walking around gun. Alright, I'll try to get a few more videos out um, in the near future here. It's been a few months since I've had a chance to do anything, but um, hopefully I'll have more time for you. Alright, thanks for watching.